Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's sixth grade math lesson. I'm Shane Holmes, the secondary math facilitator for Knox County Schools Math Department. This week's lesson is going to involve some fluency practice and some more review of fractions. Before we get started, this is the answer to last week's challenge problem. So it said, at a clothes shop, the ratio of number of skirts to coats to hats is 3 to 5 to 6. There are 120 skirts and coats all together. If the shop sells each hat for $20, how much money can be collected from the sale of all the hats in dollars? So they provided a ratio table right here, skirts to coats to hats, which is 3 to 5 to 6. So that would leave me with 45 to 75 to 90 of each. So if they sold 90 hats for $20 each, they would collect a total of $1,800 or $1,800. So to start our lesson, we are going to play Splat. So you can find these at Steve Weinmorning's website. Um, it's listed below. There's also other activities there as well, and these are quite fun. So we're going to do one together to show you how it works. So first it gives you a set of objects, and it wants you to count them in any particular way that you want. You can count them one by one, or you can find another strategy. I counted them by fours. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but I counted uh, these four, these four, and then there were two threes left over. So that gives me a total of 14 objects. So next what it does is it does a splat. Some splats have one, two, and then you know some that have even more. This one has two splats. So these two splats are covering some of the objects. So my next strategy is that I'm going to count what I do see left. So I know that I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight of the objects or, you know, little circles left. So if I take 14 and I subtract eight, that gives me six. So I know that there's six missing or essentially six that are underneath these splats. Now, that doesn't mean that there's six underneath each one. It means that there are six under both of them combined. So if I take six and I divide it by two, that could possibly help me find how many are going to be under each one. So thinking about how else you could find how many shapes would be under each one, you could possibly count up from, you know, from eight to 14. So let's look under the splats to see how many shapes are there. Remember, I said that there were gonna be six so if I divide it by two, that would tell me how many would be under each. So I'm thinking that six divided by two would be three. So I'm thinking that there's going to be three under each one of those. Three there, three here. So we think about what can we learn from this picture, and we can actually set this up as an equation that has variables and we can use the number of objects that are underneath the splats that can that's actually my unknown so that's going to be my variable so right here I have my work shown for you so there are my two right here represents the number of actual splats that there are in the whatever particular game you're playing so there are two here so 2x Eight was the number that they were showing me after the splats had appeared on the page. So, and I know that they equaled 14 because I counted that in the beginning. So this kind of goes through the process that I did in order to find my answer. So I, I, in the beginning, I took 14 and I subtracted eight. And so that left me with two X equals six. And then, as I told you, I knew that there were six, but they were divided amongst the two splats. So just know that this two represents each one of these splats. And my variable here, which I've used x, represents the unknown, the number of objects underneath each splat. So when I divide it by two, I get three. So x equals three, and that is correct. There are three of the circles underneath each splat. 
let's try another one and you can do a little bit we'll try it uh, some of it you can do we'll do a little bit together but you can try some on your own okay so I have 19 objects here these are kind of difficult so I, you can try to count them in twos um, like two four six eight ten twelve 14, 16, 18, 19. They get kind of hard when they're not in rows. So however you want to count it, you can even check yourself by counting one by one if you decide to count by twos or threes or fours. Okay, so we have three splats. So if I had 19 to begin with, and I have three splats, and I have one, two, three, four left over. So that means that if 19 and I subtract four, that means I've got to have 15 under these three. Not under each one, but under all three of them. So if I take 15 and I divide it by three, I should get five, right? So five, five, and five. So here is my work. So I had, remember, the three. you have your X as your unknown, and you attach that to however many splats you have, because essentially I'm, gonna, I'm multiplying them. Plus 4 equals 19. So I subtracted 4. I got 15. So 3X equals 15. So I have to divide it by 3. So that would give me my unknown X which would be five, and that is correct. Okay, then I'm gonna let you try the next one on your own. So I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just gonna kind of run through it. So count the objects. Okay, should have gotten 23 and there are three splats so take a minute and see if you can first find out how many are underneath each of the splats and then see if you can build an equation Okay, let's see how many are underneath each of the splats. Okay, our next activity is from Estimation 180. You can find various activities there that involve real life estimation. So for this activity, I want you to estimate how many almonds are in the cup. So recognize that this is a one-fourth cup, not a full cup. If you have a one-fourth measuring cup in your house, you can pause the video and get it and use it as a reference. If you also have almonds, you can go grab those and see how many you can fit into a one-fourth cup. So find your estimate and then come back. So I'm going to make my estimate. I'm going to say probably maybe 35 almonds will fit into the one-fourth measuring cup. Okay, so now let's see if we are correct, or if I'm correct, or if you are correct, whatever your estimate was. Okay, so take a second and find a way to determine how many almonds were in the cup. So you could think about counting, you know, one by one, or you can use multiplication. Okay, so I know that there are seven rows of four. So that would be seven times four would be 28 almonds. 
You can also use repeated addition. So there are four sets of seven. So you could say seven, 14, 21, 28. So in your packet, you will find your sixth grade daily spiral problems. They are labeled A through E. So now we will take a look at those. Make sure that you have a pencil and your packet. To start off your packet, I'm going to be working from E backwards because these are the more difficult problems. So I know that you have the answer key, but I encourage you to fold it over. That way we can work the problems together and you can try some on your own. So I am going to be working them on the whiteboard here. Okay, so the first problem says a picture framer has a thin board 10 and a half feet long. The framer notices that two and three eighths feet of the board is scratched and cannot be used. The rest of the board will be used to make small picture frames. Each frame needs one and two thirds feet of board. At most, how many, how many boards will complete the picture frame or how many picture frames can be made from the boards? Okay, so I know that I have 10, uh, 10 and a half feet. And then it says that two and three eighths cannot be used. So I'm gonna need to subtract two and three eighths. All right, well, I need to find a common denominator. And I know that if I can, I can make two and eight by multiplying by four. So that would give me four eighths and that's, you know, equivalent to a half. So then I will have 10 and four eighths and then I will still just keep this as it is. So I will have two and three eighths and subtract this. I'm gonna make sure that I can subtract my numerators here. I have four and a three, so I can do that. So it'll give me one eighth and then 10 minus two will give me eight. So I have eight and one eighth. This is like what I'm able, able to use. So, cause this two and three eighths was what was scratched. So this is how much I actually have. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that number and it says that each of the frames, they are one and two thirds. So essentially I need to find out how many sets of one and two third I have in eight and one eighth. So I'm gonna divide to do that. So I'm gonna take eight and one eighth and I'm gonna divide it by one and two thirds. Now, if you recall in our previous um, video, I think week one, where we talked about turning mixed numbers into improper fractions. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna say eight times eight, and then I'm gonna add one. So that would give me 65 over eight. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna have one times three plus two. So that gives me five thirds. Okay, now you also recall that we talked about when we're dividing, what we're actually doing is we need to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of five thirds is three fifths. So 65 over eight times three fifths. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see, can I reduce any of these, any of these numbers? So in order to do that, I have to, like I have to, um, I have to simplify across. So three and eight, they don't have a number in common that I can reduce by, but five and 65 do. So I could take five and divide it by five and I can get one. I can take 65 and divide it by five. Now I know that five times 12 is 60. So I would assume 12 times 13 would give me um, 65. So right here, now I've got 13 times three over eight times one. So that would be 39 over eight. 
Now I need to turn this improper fraction into a mixed number. So 39 divided by eight, that would be four. Four times eight is 32. Seven, so that would be seven eighths left over. Okay, so. Four and seven eighths, but I can't have a like a seven eighths left like that. This is not gonna be able to make, because if each one requires one and two thirds, this isn't gonna work, so I can only make four. So I can make four frames. That's what I can have at most. And then I have seven eighths left over. All right. Let's look at the next problem. It says a, it's D. It says a gardener creates a flower bed with an area of eight and two fifths feet squared. The width of the flower bed is two and one third feet. What is the length of the flower bed? Okay, so length. That's what I'm trying to find. Okay, so it says this flower bed. Um, it says the area is eight and two fifths feet squared. And it says that the width is two and one third feet. So right here, length is what I'm trying to find. Okay, so some things that I do know, I know that length times width will give me area. Well, I don't have this right here, but I do have width and I do have the area. So I can divide because if I divide width or the area by width, it will give me length. If I divide the area by length, it will give me the width. So what I'm gonna do is since I can't multiply because I don't have this, I'm gonna divide. Eight and two fifths, take my area and I'm gonna divide it by the width. Once again, I need to take these numbers and I need to uh, these mixed numbers, and I need to turn them into improper fractions. So I'm going to do 8 and 2 fifths first. So I'm going to say 8 times 5 plus 2. So that gives me 42 over 5. Same thing here, 2 times 3 plus 1. So 2 times 3 is 6, so that gives me 7 thirds. Okay, once again, I need to multiply by the reciprocal of seven thirds, which is three sevenths, okay? I'm going to come back up here. 42 over five times three sevenths. Once again, I'm going to find something to reduce. You don't have to do that. I can always, if you're just not sure about what you can simplify, you can always just multiply straight across and you can simplify at the end. So if you're not sure, just multiply straight across. But I know here that 7 and 42, that the number 7 can divide evenly into both. So if I divide, sorry, if I divide this by 7, I'm going to get 1. And if I divide this by 7, I'm going to get 6. So that gives me six times three over five times one. So that's 18 over five. Once again, I need to turn this into a mixed number. So 18 divided by five will be three. So three times five is 15. I'm gonna subtract gives me three and then I'm, this is always going to be my new numerator and then I'm always going to keep the same denominator so three and three fifths now I'm going to go back to my problem what I was looking for was the length three and three fifths so now I'm gonna I'm gonna actually check that so if you remember we said erase this also um 
this was um, two and one third. If you remember, I said that length times width will give me my area. So to check that, I'm gonna say three and three fifths times two and one third. If you can, pause the video and try this on your own and see if you can change these into improper fractions and multiply and make sure that you get the right answer. Okay, so I'm going to say 3 times 5 plus 3. This will give me 18 fifths times, this is 2 times 3 plus 1. So that gives me seven thirds. So again, I am going, you do not have to simplify, but I'm going to. So uh, 18 divided by three will give me six. So this will be 42 over five. I know that five times eight is 40. I already know that. So let's see. That would be eight and then 42 minus 40, that would give me two fifths. And that matches the area that they gave us in the beginning of the problem. So we know that our length is three and, th sorry, three and three fifths feet. Okay, our next problem. It says a pitcher contains this one is C. This says a pitcher contains two thirds quart of lemonade. If an equal amount of lemonade is poured into each of the six glasses, how much lemonade will each glass contain? Okay, so a pitcher contains two thirds. I'm gonna draw this out. So it's right here, two thirds. It says poured into, okay, so but I need this to go into six glasses. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I need an equal amount of this to be in each of these glasses. So I need to divide this up. Okay, so if I took two thirds and I wanted to divide it into six sections, I could divide three here and three here, but I'd have to divide this whole thing. I can't leave this out. I'm not gonna count it. I would obviously give each of these pieces would go into the glass, but now I have a new fraction. Let's count the pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So each of these pieces would be one ninth. That means that each of these cups would get one ninth of the two thirds quart. Now let's check that with some math. So if I have two thirds, I wanna divide it by six. Okay, so when I'm dividing by a whole number, I need to put this over one because that means the exact same thing. Now, remember, I need to multiply by the reciprocal. I can't just start multiplying. So the reciprocal of six over one is one sixth. So that gives me two thirds times one sixth. Once again, I'm going to simplify two and six. Anything that's even, if you're kind of stuck with simplifying, anything that is an even number can be divided by two. So I'm going to divide by two, gives me one, divide by two, that gives me three. So now I have one times one and three times three, which gives me one ninth. So the answer is each would get one ninth quart. Now, what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna let you do A and B on your own and see if you can get the answers to these problems. So, I had a great time.